Mighty glad you're here, folks, and you've come to the right place to relax for a spell and forget your worries and cares. Fact is, that spot up there on the old top rail is a special for you. You know, the gang around the old corral look forward from one song fest to another with eagerness for these little get-togethers. So we'll get our foreman, Ozzy Waters, and our little neighbor, Dal, Sally Foster, to sing some favorites for you. And I'll dig up a yarn of the old west, too. But suppose we get started now with Merle and Slim planting a little corn, boys. <laughs> I've got the blues, I've got the blues, the magical 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 blues
wish you'd look at old Slim Drool in there. Yeah. Uh-oh. It's, it's Sally Foster. I know. I know. Sally, come on in here, honey. Watch this sing a song for us. You can sing it over and over again. Now, how do you get the title of that song? Sally Foster is a little girl with a I guess it's storytelling time, ain't it? Huh? <laughs> well, you know, dude ranches are quite the thing these days, but there was a time when a city-bred man coming to spend his vacation on a ranch was in for anything but a vacation. I'll never forget Dr. Masters and what he did to Slim Margate, the foreman of the old Lazy Bee Ranch in Arizona. Slim was one of these naturals you read about. He was at home in the saddle, and when he picked up a gun, he'd just become part of it. He could rope and tie yelling as quick as anybody you ever saw, and he was mighty fancy with a letter, too. Well, Bart Jeffries, owner of the Lazy Bee, rode into the yard one morning and told us a friend of his was coming to spend the summer. A fellow by the name of Masters, a doctor of some kind from Chicago. Well, Slim kind of grunted and groaned, and I must admit most of the rest of us did, too, because we didn't, we didn't especially hanker the idea of having a greenhorn around the ranch all summer long. But the big boss had spoken, so that was that. Well, when the doc arrived, he turned out to be a mild-looking middle-aged fella that wore thick glasses. He caught right on to things, though, too. And as soon as you told him anything, he never forgot it. Well, Slim just wouldn't let him alone. He'd ride the doc from morning to night. Not in a mean, ugly manner, but just kidding about him being a tenderfoot and so forth. Well, after a while, it got sort of tiresome. Doc, meanwhile, he never complained, and very rarely would he joke back. And when he did, it'd floor Slim. <laughs> and Slim let him alone for a few days or two after that. Well, the night before Doc left, he walked over to Slim and he said, uh, Mr. Margate, you've been having a lot of fun at my expense since I've been here. Now I'd like to make a few expenses at your expense. How would you like to shoot it out with me? Well, <laughs> with that, <laughs> old Slim kind of jumped like. He said, oh, no, wait a minute. I mean with targets, of course. Well, Slim, he chuckled like and he winked at all of us. He says, sure, Doc, just name your stakes. And Doc said, all right, how about your month's pay for the next four months? Slim said, well, you got a deal there, mister. Well, to make it a long story short, that doctor took Slim out and shot rings around him. Yes, sir, he made Slim look like a rank amateur. Well, the next morning, Slim paid off with four months' pay, and they shook hands, and, and Slim went into seclusion for a time. Well, three weeks later... Slim got an envelope from Chicago with his money in it and a newspaper clipping that said, quote, Dr. Masters, world champion pistol shot, returns from summer on range. <laughs> Slim looked at it a minute and he kind of grinned like and looked at us sheepishly and says, I wonder how the doc liked amateur night. <laughs> well, after that, Slim was mighty careful who he picked on, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and Ozzy, that calls for a song, son. Oh, I will take you home again. 
across the ocean, wild and wide, to where your heart has never been, then first you were my bonny bride, the roses all have left your cheek, I've watched them fade away and die, your voice is sad whenever you speak, and tears bedim your loving eyes, oh I Ha, ha, ha. 